been what? Okay, well, if there's been some trouble out there in the mission, um, let me get my team together and we'll see uh, how soon we can uh, respond to this. On uh, what street is it on? 20th and Cap? Okay, all right. So I'll see how, how soon we can get out there. All right? Okay, okay, bye. My name is Henry Medina. I work for Northwest CRN, which is a community response network. We're an outreach team, and this is a nonprofit organization. Our clients, when they come in, they get a counselor, they get a case manager, and uh, the case manager and the counselor works with them in directing them in the right path of us to helping them with whatever services they may need, whether it's getting a job or learning to speak English or whatever other language there is. Um, I got involved with the work through a friend of mine who called my brother and said there was an, uh, there was an opening for a case manager. And I told my brother I was a little afraid to go for the job because I'd never done this type of work. And I didn't think they would hire me. They wanted somebody that had a college degree, that had a couple years experience. I didn't have none of that. And when I went for my interview, I told him straight up, this is what I bring. 25 years of incarceration, ex-drug dealer. I'm just tired of doing time. I want to give it back to the community. One of the things that really motivates me to do this is that every year I dress up as Santa Claus and I give gifts out to these kids. I walk in with my bag full of toys and you see the smile on these kids, man. Like their faces light up so big. And some of them actually believe I am Santa Claus. And some of them know I'm not, you know, but it's really, that's what motivates me so much, man, and inspires me to see these kids, to see how happy they are. You know, that's what keeps me going, man. It's like, man, I, that's why I do this. Well, I was born in Puerto Rico, but I grew up in New York. I was two months old when they brought me to New York. My family background wasn't a good one because I, I experienced a lot of violence when I was young watching my father come home drunk and beat on my mother and then punish us for no reasons. What led to my, my, my violent lifestyle was that after I seen my father doing that to my mother, in my head, I was so young, in my head, I thought that was normal behavior. I thought that was normal to, to take your girl and to slap her around because I used to see my father doing it all the time. At the age of 14, I was already a leader of a gang called the Young Galaxies. So we had a, uh, an incident with another gang called the Caribbean Kings. And a fight broke out, and because of that fight, I don't know what happened, how it happened, but I wound up taking a knife and I wound up stabbing the, one of the youths, and he died. I was 14 years old. So after that, I ran, I ran to my aunt's house to hide, and then I got arrested. You know, it didn't stop me from continuing the lifestyle of, of gangs and graffiti, which was another lifestyle that I took on. Graffiti became like a way of letting our anger out. Instead of being violent, letting our anger out in a violent way, we picked up the paint cans. We got a bunch of writers together and we started performing, doing art on canvases and selling the artwork. Yes sir, that right there is me, Henry 161 Medina. History of American Graffiti. And they consider me to be a, a pioneer of graffiti because I started doing graffiti in 1969. Mm -hmm. You know, and back then it was called vandalism. I was taken out of the club because I was too violent to be in the club, you know, so they got rid of me and they kept the club going. And then I just continued on to my criminal lifestyle. One of the biggest influence and inspirations in my life was when I took on the religion of Islam. I got tired of the violence and I got tired of being put in prison for it. So I had to find some other way to change the person that I was to try to calm myself down. And Islam taught me that. It changed my whole character of who I am today. When I came out of the federal penitentiary, um, they 
they designated me to go back to New York. I didn't want to go back to New York, so I came out here to San Francisco because my brother had been living out here. He knew I was trying to get involved in working with kids. So um, he asked me to come out to Frisco and that he would see what he can do to help me out. There was like about seven of us that was applying for the job. And I was the only one that didn't have the experience. Everyone else did. Then they called me a third time for a third interview. And that's when they told me that I had the job. That was so exciting for me because it proved to me that, you know, I can't be afraid to go after things in life, you know, because you, you can you can achieve anything you want if you put your mind to it. At the very beginning, the first thing they did was they gave me this one kid. He was 16 at the time. He went through four case managers and they all walked out on him because he was too, he just wouldn't listen to nobody. So then they said, well, you want to work with kids, Henry? We got one for you. So I took him on and that's gratifying to me. After I did that first kid, it was like it, I took the gloves off and I was ready to just, you know, hit the streets. I'll be keeping real with you, bro. I just tell it straight up, you know. I tell the kid, you can either listen to me or you can listen to the police. And sometimes these kids are hardhead, you know. They don't want to listen to nobody. You want to keep hanging out on the corner? You don't want to go to school? Okay, well then this is what's going to happen to you. This is the way it's gonna happen. You're gonna get arrested, you're gonna go to YGC, you're gonna call your mom, you're gonna ask your mom to uh, to call Henry, and then you want Henry to come see you, and I'll be there to see you. I consider myself to be pretty lucky as a case manager because some case managers have clients that get killed. And I've been doing this for 10 years now, and none of my kids have ever been killed. I would say I'm at about 75% with my clients that have become successful. I would like to be remembered for Henry, the one that helped change the community, helped change our youth in the community. Henry, who was able to go to prison, do his time, come out, and rebuild his life. That's how I want to be remembered. Me to say some MC rhyme, so I said this rhyme I'm about to say. The rhyme was there, but then it went this way. Took a test to become an MC.